Brought to you by Ford. Go further. Before tuning into an all new season of Tyler Perry's The Haves and the Have Nots, let's recap every shocking twist and turn from last season with an epic refresher. We kicked off with Candace and Jeffrey soaked in blood after stabbing Candy's attacker and baby daddy Quincy to death in self defense. When Jeffrey realized that he helped commit murder, he freaked out. Cool headed Candace acted fast. She started wrapping Quincy's body up, but was interrupted by a knock on the door. Her nosy neighbor called the cops over Quincy's illegally parked car. So Jeffrey had to move Quincy's car while the cop watched. One big problem, Jeffrey couldn't drive stick shift. Jeffrey was arrested and thrown in jail, where he found himself sharing a cell with two of Savannah's most notorious families, Jim and Catherine Cryer and his very own parents, David and Veronica Harrington. Veronica gave Jeffrey a hard time for landing in prison, and he answered her right back, calling his mom out for having an affair. Then Jim Cryer chimed in to expose Veronica for having Wyatt sexually assaulted while he was in prison. This revelation sent Jeffrey over the edge. I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure you never get out of here. DA Jennifer Salison gave Jeffrey a way to do just that, offering complete immunity if he agreed to testify against his own mother. Jennifer also made a deal with Jim's troubled son, Wyatt. If he would testify against his parents for covering up his fatal hit and run accident, he'd gain early access to his $12 million inheritance if he could just prove he was no longer using drugs. Wyatt agreed to the deal, but because he wasn't clean, he called on a local drug dealer to provide him with forged rehab documents and a kit to clean his system of the drugs. Wyatt then proceeded to buy $80,000 worth of drugs and promised to pay the dealer as soon as his inheritance dropped. As if Candy's situation wasn't bad enough, she'd been holding out on war. He'd done her dirty work and was back to collect. If Candace didn't have $1.5 million for him by the end of the week, she'd be dead. Maggie, who strategically printed a photo of Veronica cheating with her young lover Benny in the newspaper, hoped that David would see it and leave his cruel wife once and for all. Her plan worked, and for one night, Maggie got her wish. Unfortunately for Maggie, the next morning, David declared it was all a mistake. Yes, David's sneaky wife Veronica had been cheating, but he wanted to protect her from a hit that Jim had put out on her. Prison seemed to be the safest place she could be, so when David heard she'd been released, he feared the worst. But when Veronica left the prison, she ran into Laquita, who had been arrested for breaking into Candy's house searching for her missing brother Quincy. These unlikely allies exchanged game-changing information. Your husband set up a hit on you. How do you know that? They have one of our boys. Be at your house right now. Which brings us to last season's finale, when Candace was dealt an even worse hand. First, a menacing visit from war ended with an even shorter deadline, just 48 hours to get him the money. Then Veronica showed Candace and Jeffrey that she knew they committed murder. What is this? It's luminol. Okay, well, what's luminol? It's a chemical that depicts blood. In a hotel room across town, Wyatt was found unresponsive and without a pulse after overdosing before Catherine could help him. And finally, Veronica turned her would-be assassin on her mortal enemy, Maggie Day. Go on in, I'll be there in just a second. And that's your epic refresher. Does Maggie Day survive the gunshot? Can Candace change her fate in just 48 hours? Tune in for the premiere of Tyler Perry's The Haves and the Have Nots, Tuesday, June 21st at 9, 8 central, only on OWN. Hi, I'm Andre Hall. What's up? I'm Jonathan Chase. We're here from Tyler Perry's Love Thy Neighbor, only on OWN. Only on OWN. And make sure to subscribe. 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 Subscribe.